Hello, all you gore fiends and horror hounds. This is Brett from Dimension Z. Join us, I sometimes am by intern Corey. Hi, intern Corey. Hey, Brett, how you doing, buddy? Hey, not bad because we're talking about a movie that we got a screener for, which is always very fun. Yeah, absolutely. Older and gods. it's a love. Uh, older gods. It's a Lovecraft movie, which you know. See by my little guy behind me here. I'm all about that. You know, you've got my. Like Cthulhu patch. So let's Listen, not... You're all in with the Lovecraft stuff. Like I like the Stuart Gordon and like, but I've not like dove super deep into it. But I like I liked older gods. So like, um, there's definitely like, there's three different kinds of you know Lovecraft movies. You have the Stuart Gordon Brian Yuzna ones, like like the Reanimators and From Beyond. Then you have the more slow burn psychological ones like like older gods and suitable flesh yeah. and, and the void. And then you have ones that are generally terrible. I was gonna say I remember seeing the void, and for a minute it like, oh, it's got me, and then it lost me. Yeah, the void the void for me came and went in waves. Not my favorite, but not the worst Lovecraft movie I've seen by far. And this one I actually did like. Not, I, I'm not just saying that because we're having the uh, Edward Trifecta writer, director, producer on. Yeah, yeah. Like this dude did like everything for this movie. <laughs> yeah, which uh, hey, I, I like that. That's passion. Yeah, it is that, and that makes sure that your vision gets gets done for it. Um, oh, for sure. But yeah, I. This one is covering um, a very hard Lovecraftian subject to cover, which is, you know, kind of dealing with the, the blind idiot god Azathoth, who many consider unfilmable, because if he would ever actually wake up, you, the, whole, the whole of existence is done, because we are just his dream. So it's like the end of Sopranos, so Tony would just look up and black. Yeah, basically. <laughs> okay, so this isn't Cthulhu still. Um, I mean, there's definitely some Cthulhu esque elements in it. At one point, I saw tentacles. Um, it's Lovecraft. There's tentacles. Yeah, it, it doesn't matter which character it is. There's tentacles. He's like, yeah, the the dude from Ancient Aliens. It's always like aliens. Lovecraft <laughs> is like tentacles. No, but yeah, you know, I liked older gods. I like the cult stuff. I'd leave more of what I got out of it was like the cool cult stuff because it reminds me of like I love my Satan movies. I like my cult movies and stuff. So it like a just a guy in a black robe in the woods. I, I yeah, like it. I mean it's it's a cool visual. There's absolutely nothing wrong with a dude in a black robe in the woods. You know that's why I do. That's why that's what I do every Wednesday <laughs> is just pick a random neighbor's house. Dress up in a black robe and stand outside it ominously. <laughs> I really yes, I have been shot the, at. The like how they use like the drawings because you know you can't like you said like how do you film something where they're like oh it's beyond comprehension what's going on Lovecraft loves that kind of thing good write around um, but I like how like they use the drawings in this to kind of like the real like dark and satanic looking and whatnot um i love like when it's like the planet or the moon then there's like jupiter behind it it's like a giant blue planet like i liked all that oh, stuff oh, the small planet they keep showing is pluto pluto is a central theme in a lot of lovecraft's work just because it's like pluto's the planet we know the least about i mean i guess technically it's not a planet anymore but whatever back in my day pluto <laughs> was a planet <laughs> Um, okay, okay, so it's the, the tiny planet's Pluto, and then, so what shows up behind it? Is that the thing that the god lives on? No, no, that would be either Neptune or Uranus. Oh, okay. That's right, I'm saying it appropriately so nobody can laugh. Uranus! <laughs> <laughs> um, but like you said, this was, this one was good. This one was really good. This was, uh, we got two great Lovecraft movies last year, and this one and Suitable Flesh. 
Yeah, and it seems like how many stories does this dude have that there's like all of these adaptations and all this stuff? My my complete Lovecraft works are like this. They're they're so thick. Um, the thing is, the funny part is, like when you actually sit down and read Lovecraft, and I've, I've said it before on some of the other episodes we've done, he's not that good a writer. Like a lot of his. He cannot, he cannot write a dialogue between two people to save his life. But the ability to, you know, the stream of consciousness thought from one character, that's where Lovecraft shined. And that's really um, what David Roberts, the, who will be here in a few minutes, that's really what, to me, what he got across in this movie is just that stream of consciousness going from, you know, the voiceovers of, of Billy Hmm. The, his friend that killed himself. Um, well, we are led to believe killed himself, but, you know, spoilers, of course, for all of this, because we're not good at no spoilers at all no. here at Throbbing with Horror. Um, but we're, um, you know, and then having it switch there in the middle to Chris's stream of consciousness. And let's talk about how good the guy that played Chris in this movie was, because this movie essentially was a one-man show for most of it. Yeah, and you kind of forget about that, like, throughout it, which shows you how good that he is. That, yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's, most, it's like the beginning of Evil Dead 2, where it's, most of it's just Ash in the cabin by himself. But you forget, because it is good. Uh, Rory Wilson is the actor's name. He has two movie credits to his name. This one oh. and a movie called Afterlife. Oh, okay. I, I mean, I'd love to see more of him in some stuff because, like I said, this was a one-man show, and, and he killed it. And even, like, when Billy shows up for the little bit he does, like, I like him, but he looks so much like Greg Sestero that I couldn't be like, oh, they should have gotten Greg Sestero. He would have done it. Had, it had to shoehorn that in there. Hey, he you? looks kind of like him. He does. He does. I'll give you that. <laughs> he definitely does look a little bit like Greg Sestero, who is, you know, as everybody who has listened to an episode of Throbbing with Horror at any point knows, may or may not be in Brett's basement somewhere. He touched my shoulder once. He did. There's a picture. I'll put it up on here. <laughs> I don't I don't know how to do that on Zoom yet. I can't be like, hey yeah, Jamie, can you pull that up? We yeah. we don't ha we don't have a Jamie. I mean, I guess Greg is our Jamie. But um I definitely recommend seeing this. It's available um, on uh, Fandango at home, which is what used what what is now. Well, that's what Voodoo was. Like, yeah, I didn't know Voodoo, Voodoo changed its name. I didn't. I didn't either. Like these electronic services need to stop. Yeah, because I'm old and I'm gonna call it by its old name anyway. Twitter. It's also on Amazon Prime. It's on Amazon Prime. It's on um, Apple TV. Um, and you know, so something I like too is it was an enjoyable movie, and it was also an hour and twenty one minutes. Nice, easy in and out. You know, you're not devoting two and a half hours to it. Absolutely. Which an hour, like an hour twenty, hour twenty five. That's like my sweet spot for a runtime. Oh, it's good. And because that, like, I feel like it kind of limits you of like, well, you only have this much time. You can't like just completely indulge yourself of there's a throw everything in there. Just learn to edit. Exactly. Marvel movies. <laughs> but let's see anything. Um, no, I don't got anything else on, on this one. Um, like I said, we're going to bring uh, David Roberts, the director here. Well, director, writer, producer. The Edward trifecta of let's see what all he did: director, producer, writer, editor. That was it. That's what. So uh, we got a David. Wa we got a David Roberts quadrilateral here. <laughs> Square. Well, that's what a quadrilateral is. Well, I don't. That's not horror. You know, you say that's not horror, but like I've seen you mention non-horror things in the chat. No, never. Oh, that, that's right. Let's 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 not. No, Brett it only does horror. How many of those VHS tapes behind you there are not horror? These were free. 
that is one of the coolest things you've ever scored. I know. When you, I when you post that in the chat with your car just full of VHS tapes. The 250 pounds of tapes. Nice. Nice. So um we're gonna we're gonna bring David Roberts on now. I uh, hope you guys enjoy it. Rob on. Rob on. And now we are joined by David A. Roberts, writer, director, producer, and editor of Older Gods. Hi guys, thanks for having me. The Edward Trifecta Plus One. Yeah, so I, I, as I say, it's a way, my way of saving some cash. If I do more jobs, it means uh, the cash. No, it's more they're the jobs I wanted to do. I kind of really, I, I'm actually originally started as an editor before I became a director. So it, it's it's the bit I love, to be honest. And I'm not saying I don't love the shoot part, but the putting it together is of my street. So as one of the producers on the film, I wrote it because. I don't know, I was the quickest at writing. No, no, I, that's, it's, it's, I, I'm not sure which is my specialism, but um, I suppose that's directing, isn't it? Directing is the doing everything and trying surrounding you with people who are better at the specialist bit. <laughs> you know, that's, that's my way of thinking anyway. I always do love like seeing a movie that has the same writer, pro, 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 writer, director, producer, because it just seems like there's something extra special to it. It's, it's watched, one person's vision, you know. I, I watched the um, was it? The, have you seen the Abyss? Do you know James Cameron's The Abyss, um, the Sea Underground. The, but anyway, but his the end of that film is really funny because it just felt like it faded in, directed by James Cameron, and then that faded out, and then James Cameron faded in again, and then it just kept. I just like just put yourself <laughs> once with lots of titles above it. It just made so I was like, I can't do that. So, it, so in those multiple jobs I did, I made sure that there was somebody in the credits between me, <laughs> you know, but it was only yeah. three or four. And because it was a job which was um, filmed in the middle of nowhere, so we, and it's, it was filmed during COVID. So we, um, it was kind of in a bubble anyway. So we had to be a minimized size crew because that crew had to stay in that cottage because there's no hotels nearby. So, uh, uh, so everybody was everybody was doing ten jobs basically, and it wasn't even a budget thing. It was a it was a pandemic thing, I suppose. So so uh, so yeah. Every, this is a film where because people keep laughing. It's like a film that was really hard making. There's like ten people in the credits, <laughs> you know, but just said again and again and again. That's actually cool, <laughs> though, that you like lived in the house. Yeah, it was kind of even yeah, dead there's ask. No, there was nowhere else to go, so it was kind of uh, we would work there for fifteen and sixteen hours a day. Uh, eat outside on the little bench. It was, it was, it was quite nice, you know? <laughs> uh, and this, it was lovely weather. That was like the hottest week of the, a bloody year. Um, but yeah, no, it was uh, it was a uh, it was fun. Yeah, I'll definitely do, I, I do it again. I mean, that's what we call a vacation in the intern household. <laughs> you know, staying in a cabin in the middle of nowhere and eating outside. Well, it was really like the 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 just the sense of being in the middle of nowhere. It's just I don't know. It, it, you got the sense of what it'd be like to live in an igloo in the middle of nowhere because it's 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 just so remote. So uh, when we did the location scout for it, it was really um, just a little bit of excitement when we got there. Going, oh, this is it. It's proper. But we it was so it was so remote. It, it, it had drinking water, but it was kind of brown. So it was like, <laughs> why why is this brown? It was kind of had its own whoever built it. It was clearly like an old. It used to be a farm, and they kind of changed it into a place they could like a country cabin a cottage thing, which kind of had its own water system. And they were just like, it's got brown water, by the way. So, but when it was the hottest day of the year, which is hot, hot. Um, uh, and you haven't got any drinking water at taps, that that quickly becomes a problem. And then if it's a pandemic where bottles of water are quickly disappearing to, and it's a 45 minute drive to the nearest store where there is any bottled water, adds to that nervous breakdown I was talking about, uh, which uh, uh, which thankfully I avoided towards, towards, towards the end. Um, I'm, we've talked on this show, our, our show a few times. I'm I'm the Lovecraft guy for the show. For yeah. sure. So, so immediately when Brett when Brett let us know, he's like, "Hey, we got this message from this company about a screener for a movie called Older Gods. It looks Lovecraftian." He didn't even get the word Lovecraft out, and I'm like, "I'm in." 
<laughs> let's do <laughs> like, this. Let's, yeah. let's do this. And and then I watched it and I'm like, oh shit, this dude just did as a thought, you know, the unfilmable concept. And you found <laughs> a way not only to do it, but to do it very well. We were talking a little bit before me and Brett and I. We got two very excellent Lovecraft movies in 2023 between yours and um, Joe Lynch's Suitable Flesh. Oh, I haven't checked that out yet, to be honest, and I, oh. I don't know why. It's not as if you know it's uh, you got getting through all this other stuff before you get to it. But that I, I have heard a lot of. That's very Lovecraftian and good. That's mm -hmm. got that's got Barbara Compton in it, which is always good to me. And of course. <laughs> <Yeah>. well, <yeah. laughs> Um, but it was written by Dennis Paoli, who did Reanimator and From Beyond. Yeah, it was still Yuz the same. Getting Brian Yuzna was together, the producer, yeah. so yeah, yeah no, it was I'm, the band back together. Yeah, so I'll, uh, it's on my to-do list that one. But it's good. Obviously. But that's it. It's do you know, do you, know you want it to be good, where it's good to hear it's good because Lovecraft. Ours isn't a Lovecraft story. It's not quite as a thought, but and but it's very Lovecraftian. Do you know in, in the in the, yeah. the the genre, so to speak? Because the genre is essentially something weird happens. Somebody comes to investigate, and something weird happens. And uh, yeah, and Older Gods is very much in that 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 yeah. That, that there's a tentacle. Yeah, there's always a tentacle. Of you course, it has to. <laughs> you have to. That's it. We we have had a bit of um. Because it, cause it's always kind of, uh, I think you get older gods or you don't. I think it's one of those type films. Uh, I, some of the, the the criticism was, if we get any criticism, it's what the film isn't rather than what the film is. So we did have people going, I wanted more tentacles. And I was like, <laughs> I, I couldn't afford more tentacles. That was it. You had my max tentacles I could do. I mean, the, I, there is, how are you? There's, a, there's such a thing as too much tentacles. Let's be honest. <laughs> yeah. So well, I, I, I did a good amount of testicle, testicles. Uh, 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 testicle, <laughs> <yeah>. Tentacles. <laughs> well, those two. That's a different film. I like how though you handled it with like it. It's so much of the Lovecraftian stuff. Is it's so humongous. It's beyond words, kind of yeah. thing. And but I like how you incorporate because I love the drawings and the sketches in this movie like they're really yeah. dark looking like i more lean towards like i like the cult angle of it more like i right. love cult movies i love like satan movies and stuff like that so it remind me kind of like that but i absolutely love the drawings they're awesome so the drawings yeah so that was just to give andrew sexton his props he was the art director and he did two things he did the first of all he did the practical effects which was all the you know like the wounds and things like that and um he had this really creepy technique of uh, the wounds and things he did would look moist, yeah. but were actually dry. It's such a weird and creepy effect. Um, so uh, and so he did all the prosthetics himself because he didn't have a team because we didn't have. Um, uh, he also did all these sketches that we talk, So all the sketches on the wall. Um, he did all of them by hand. There's no. Um, oh wow! I think there's two parts of it. There's Keith Lupton, the production designer, he did all the stuff where there was photography. So if you saw photography of forensics and body parts in, in certain situations, and um, I think if you look closely, you might see me in a hazmat suit with a thing, taking a photo of something. Uh, you'll blink and you'll miss it. But, uh, but, but um, what's the word? So... Uh, so, so that's all Keith. Uh, that's all the, the that's the production design side of things. So he actually set up scenes, took photos of them, printed them off to do it. But the actual sketches part is Andrew Sexton, our art director, and some of the stuff he felt bad. There's so, so much stuff didn't make it on screen. Uh, so much stuff he felt bad that he's kind of like just flicking through these pages. But they're supposed to be like some of them are like the scribblings of a madman, and there's pages and pages of it. And John, you're like, I'm so sorry, Andy. I'm so sorry. I can't. <laughs> I can't use all of it. But I think that that adds the production value. So even if there's something in the background that clearly took time to do, it, it gets. Uh, but it's not fixating on it. I think that draws you into the world a little bit. You know, in terms of it helps it make it feel a bit more real, should we say? Because it's not just one or two bits. So it's you know, lived that's in. yeah, ex exactly. That's the thing. That's what I was just going to say. We talk about a lot um, when we do our reviews, a, a lived-in feel. It, the world doesn't 
feel new. It feels it, it's been around for a while. Yeah, yeah. This isn't a set. Like you said, I think like using the old farmhouse type of thing, it adds a lot of care because the farmhouse itself is almost kind of a character of like you get to know that stairwell and everything. And yeah, we tried to, I tried to write the beginning because it's a bit slower paced to the beginning, but that's very purposeless to give it, give you the lay of the, the land so you can see the, the house, the outside, the, the, we call it the outhouse, the bit outside, which is stuff happens in. So hopefully it gives you a sense of where everything is. Uh, but that's yeah, that's very kind of purpose purposely done, you know, to let you understand because the film opens with a bit of a kind of a sacrifice thing, which you work out what's happening later. So, so that buys you some time, should we say, as, as an editor, to slow the pace down a little bit to try and remind everybody where we are and what to expect and things like that. Because hopefully, the opening scene makes you go, "Well, that was relevant. That's going to happen again. I need to know what happens there." <laughs> so, it buys you a little time and. Uh, storytelling, should we say? Absolutely. Um, I love the the slow burn of this movie. Yeah. Um, we, we've talked there. To me, there there are three types of Lovecraftian movies. There's the the body horror Lovecraft stuff that you know Stuart Gordon and Brian Yosna did with Reanimator from Beyond. Mm. There's the slow burn stuff that like you and Suitable Flesh handled, and, and mm. to an extent, The Void. And then there's the next to unwatchable stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hopefully we're not in that category. But no, 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 uh, no. You're so so again. Slow slow burns, maybe not for everybody. But the point we were trying to do was you're not supposed to know what's happening. It's supposed to be the fear of the unknown. So if you don't give the audience time to breathe and think about it, they don't care. Do you know? So it's kind of what was that? What was he doing? Why is that happening? It's what's in your head is scarier than whatever we could ever put on screen. So the point is trying to make sure that uh, you take the time to develop the person and why you should why you should give a shit if that person yeah. lives or die dies. Um, why what they're talking about seems important. Because it's obviously a small film, but with the, the kind of lore and world that we were trying to make the world feel big. So you kind of need to take a moment to take it all in, you know? So if it's just cut, 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 nobody cares what's happening. So um, that's not that. Obviously, you're doing other, other films that need the cut, 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 a bit more actually, but All the Gods isn't that film, is it really? It's supposed to be... I know I like to think it speeds up later in the film, you know, when things mm -hmm. kind of go downhill a little yeah. bit. But I hopefully by that time, we've we've bought your patience or attention, should we say, that if... if I would say, if you're kind of in halfway through... Uh, it's your type of film, you know. So, uh, uh, yeah, no, it's purposely. I don't. Know, some people see slow burn as kind of a what's the word? A not an insult, or but like a. But it's. But I'm quite. No, no, we take our time to get there. So hopefully, the payoff, basically. Well, and I like how it is. Like it'll be slow burn, slow burn. Like we're just like in the house. It's a lot of dialogue. A lot of him just like looking at. Mm -hmm pictures or like watching the videos and stuff yeah, yeah, yeah and then yeah. it'll be like boom here's a planet now boom here's a bigger planet now here's death doom voice talking about the <laughs> end of everything <laughs> i'm boom back in the house so it's yeah to, there is a sense exactly of, what was that what was uh, um so yeah it's a whole thing was supposed to be instead of relying on like jump scares and things like that it's it's disorientating and unsettling. They were the two words that we kept doing. So hopefully these dreams are helping. The helping is probably the wrong word, but you know, like making just it's like the disorientating. I'm sure this is going to go somewhere. I just don't know where, and I don't think it's going to go well where it goes. Um, and unsettling is the creepy part of it. So it's the slow building up of walking up the stairs and seeing some hearing something and you pop your head around the wall and somebody's there, you know, so, so it's kind of, uh, that was, was disorientating and unsettling. That's what we were aiming for. Oh, there's the one bit when the car alarm goes off and he goes outside and he leaves the door open. It's like, don't do that. He's going to get inside. Now the cult's inside your house. <laughs> so, yeah, so there's always a you know you, you try to do the horror logic. So it's just like, don't run upstairs. It's just, <laughs> yeah. it's just the, <laughs> So we've always tried to have a reason. So like, why doesn't he go home? Is is just because guilt doesn't make us act rationally. 
because I've had some people go, well, if I was in his position, I would have just got my back and gone home. Yeah, but you haven't, you're not being crushed by the weight of not being there when your friend that when you, so you're blaming yourself, you, you wouldn't act normally and you'd stay, but also like the, the, uh, why go outside when the cars, <laughs> when the car alarm's going off? But if you, but he just woken up, so he's all disoriented. He's a bit, little bit disorientated, and maybe got a bit too brave for his. But, but that's the whole point. He comes out feeling brave, and then he quickly doesn't and goes back inside. It's like uh, he almost realizes, it's like, oh, I'm outside. I'm yeah, this was this was not a good decision. <laughs> yeah, so I tried not to just walking aimlessly in the dark. I wanted him to come outside, shout at the dark, going, I, trying to act brave, like I, I saw you. Uh, and then quickly realize what a fucking terrible idea this is and go and run back into the house quickly. Yeah, that was the point. You were supposed to see us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. We were cult, by the way. Yeah. 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 That's the, yeah, um, that's the we, trick. We, we talk a lot about movie, like, especially when, when you're dealing with the slow burn movies. I'm just, um, A24 is the studio that comes to mind. Yeah. That, that's a the, movie that you never feel quite comfortable or safe or relax watching this movie. And and you've definitely achieved that with this one. That's good. I, that makes it you know like it shouldn't make me feel good affecting people like that, but it definitely does. So it's some that's that's an issue I've got to have to deal with personally. But uh well, make, making people feel feel scared and unsettled is very much the, the goal in the first place, you know. We're my horror mom, people. Probably, my mom probably is not proud of that, but yeah. your mom should be proud. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah just you know the like i said the unsafeness of the the eldritch horror of it all mm. it, it came through great in this film like it feels like a much bigger budget film than it was oh, especially knowing that you did it during covid mm. and um your lead actor rory like that dude acted his ass off yeah this entire <laughs> yeah. this Essentially, so, this movie is a one-man show. He's in every. He's pretty much in every shot. That that was the. That was why. Do you know when people are like why could you afford could you afford to go get a name actor or whatever like that? Um, but so yeah. But if we go and find somebody and we don't know how professional they are, we don't know if they can actually remember. We didn't have the time to fuck about. We <laughs> we had to we had to. And um, make sure that when people turned up, they was ready. To, and Rory, we w we'd worked with him before on a short film called Afterlife, which you can find on Wagyu's YouTube channel if interested. It's like a uh, somebody waking up in an abandoned hospital with certain parts of them missing type film. Um, well, I know what I'm doing. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but he was quality in that. That was just a few days filming. Uh, but you know, he just you, somebody who earns your trust really quickly because came. Came with a game face, so to speak. Came knowing the lines, taking it all seriously, g delving into the. Because I'm not a big, what's my motivation type actor guy. Yeah. I just want to explain. Let's talk about your backstory and why you're doing it. Yeah, of course, but um, but you're supposed to do that beforehand, not on set and waste everybody's time. So uh, he's he got he was like, what's this? What's this? And this before the film started rolling. So when we came in and we started going and we only had a couple of weeks to film this, uh, we couldn't mess about. So Rory, when he had a question, it was something just happened on the day. So he deserves all the praise in the world for uh, pulling off a performance with, we, we only had the time for one or two takes most of the time. So it's not as if he could sit there doing it again and again and again until he gets it right. One or two takes, three, four, the most. I don't think I ever did more than like five or six. Um uh so yeah so hopefully it's uh it's his first it's his first leading role in a film and hopefully it'll be the it should be a star making performance in my opinion <laughs> absolutely i yeah. you know i almost i think i don't know if it was just when me and intern were talking off the show or if this was the pre thing but like him evil dead 2 when so much of it is just ash in the cabin by himself, but it's not boring at all. Yeah. Like it's really good. And like the that's what, that's actor the... is so good. That's what it reminded me of with him. Of, there's so much of just him in the house, but yeah. you're not bored. It's good. <laughs> you know, yeah. but it's, that's the, that's the, what's the word? Um, that's what good Sam Raimi's a good director and he's a good, so he's a good storyteller. It's not, 
Can everybody do it? No. Do you know what I mean? Is it hard work? Yes. There's a lot of planning that goes into because people think it's just keeping budget down, getting a location. But when you're writing it, it's like, why is he still in the, that one? How can we make it interesting? That's the challenge, really, um, where a lot of people go wrong and they start throwing money at the problem, do you know, um, uh, which most indies often don't have the uh, the luxury of that, should we say. Um, but yeah, so we were quite... It's it's the it's not easy, but if some but I would argue that some of my favorite films are that one location, never leave there type thing. Like Cube, have you ever seen Cube? Um, I love Cube. Uh, there's a bunch, but a bunch of them. It's just kind of if it's always the because I, I if some if I hear that it's if it's a film based in one location, I'm interested in watching it just to see how they did it and if they can keep it interesting and keep it. And there's so many films out there which. Uh, do it right. So I'm always, I, there's one of my fit. It's not really a genre, do you know what I mean? But if you get a yeah. horror or a site or a thriller or based in one location, like I really like, have you ever seen Buried? Ryan, like, I know Ryan Reynolds plays Deadpool and all that. But years ago, he did something called Buried, which was literally just the whole film is him. He's been buried alive in a coffin. And he's really oh. good in it. It was like surprising. Do you know, because of all of his little quips and his, yeah. his being, for, you forget he's actually a really good actor because uh, he's, it's like a, he wakes up and all he's got is a torch and his phone. But the whole film is thrilling because sand's starting to come through and he's only got so much oxygen. So it's like the thrill of how to get out there. That's brilliant. That's, that's harder to write and do than to write. And felt a big, massive epic, in my opinion. It may take a lot more people um, and a lot more thought, but it's much less creative, if that makes sense, in a long-winded way. Yeah. Very live movies creep me out. Mm. Not, I'm not good with those. <laughs> or do you have one last um, question, Corey? Um, I guess we'll just uh, throw throw Greg's question out there. But, uh, well, what, one first, where can we find the movie? Yes. So it's on Amazon, Apple TV, uh, Vudu, is it? It's a, if you, you, it's on most decent VODs at the moment. And in the next couple of months, uh, there will be a special edition Blu-ray with nice. lots of making, here we go, lots of making, lots of making of, lots of commentaries. I'll argue that I learned more from commentaries than I did for the entire film school with the right one. So that's very important to me to get some of those out of, but multiple, like a commentary of the director, a commentary of the visual effects team, a commentary. Of, so that's the plan. So hopefully we're trying to get out in the next couple. Of, but if you look for Wagyu Films, W-A-G-Y-U Films on Instagram or YouTube or all that, that, as soon as we know, we'll let everybody else know that's coming out soon. Thank you for um, putting commentaries on because I absolutely love commentaries. Yeah, no, and I, for some it, reason, they stopped doing them. But I... I, I I will I will download one and listen to it like a podcast. I oh, don't even yeah. see the film. Um but in terms of like there's some really I'm not a big fan of the ones where it's the actors all patting each other on the back all the way through. Yeah. But if it's yeah. the ones which is like the, the the technical type ones where they're telling you how it was done. I think just I found out more honestly, I did three years or did I four years in film school. And not that I learned my basics there, but lots of little practical ideas I got from uh, commentaries. It's like little things. Like one of my favorite bit I ever got from a commentary was Aliens. And at the end of it, have you seen it? You must have seen it. Oh, of course. Give me oh, yeah. Give me it. So do you know the end where they're flying away from the the the, the planet and uh, the big bomb, go the, the, the site melts down and you see a big... Um, explosion in the clouds below them as you see the ship coming up that was if you go and watch it after this that was a load of cotton wool with a <laughs> light bulb under it turned on in slow motion that's all it was and it looks amazing it looks yeah. like a really different uh explosion because it's in the clouds and it's kind of like like as if it's like the akira style blow like ball coming up of explosion before you hear the noise so a good mixture with sound design and i was just Remember listening to the commentary going, no, no, it's not. That's <laughs> not it. That's, that's a cotton. If you watch it, it's a bed of cotton wool. They've shaped like clouds and they've just turned on a light bulb. They've made that slow motion and then they've superimposed the uh, the ship flying away with Ripley and that on, which stuff like that, I 
That's crack to me. I love that stuff. I don't know why. You know, just a li- so where somebody's taken creativity and made it better than anything if somebody just threw money at it. Because it's so simple that people would have got explosions and, th- and it wouldn't have looked as good. So anybody where anybody – usually when they've got one hour to come up with a with a with uh, an actual thing and – that's my favorite. But commentary, I found out. I, I don't don't remember that being in a in the make the three hour making of of aliens. It was in the commentary, I think. Yeah, well, but check that out. Watch, go and watch it on YouTube or something. You'd be like, oh, that is cotton ball in a bowl. <laughs> yeah. And to finish it up, uh, favorite horror movie of all time. Favorite horror movie, uh, the thing. I know it's nice. kind of size nice. because it's not just. It's not just. It's got. It's got. Every, it's got everything a growing boy needs. It's got the. It's got the creature effects. It's got the jumps, but I really like the the paranoia, the who is it, the who done it type. Who is it? Who's the who is the thing? And everybody's wary of each other, so that that grows a touch. I fucking love that film. That's, That's great, great answer. Good job. <laughs> Perfect. <answer. laughs> thank you. Um, well, David, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. No problem. Yes, go see Older Gods. It is good. Do it. Right. Or I'm coming to your house. I'm going to eat chicken and watch you sleep. <laughs> <laughs> he'll do it he'll do it yeah. you don't want yeah. that thanks for having me guys appreciate it thanks for joining all us. right thank you for joining us on another youtube video of throbbing with horror make sure to like share and subscribe and hit that belly thing Aww. um we hope that david a roberts and older gods has left your brain throbbing with horror